Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV, the show highlighting S&P's analytical insights and global perspectives on current credit market developments. I'm Mal Fallon, Managing Director for Standard & Poor's Municipal Enterprise Group, and I'll be your host today. Standard & Poor's recently released a rating for 551 million of bonds that were issued for privatization of Army Lodging, Group Projects A and B. The debt was issued by Rest Easy LLC. A full detailed report is available on Ratings Direct on the Global Credit Portal. Joining me today to discuss the rating is the primary analyst for the transaction, Mike Young Alexander. Mike Young is a director in U.S. public finance in our housing group. Mike Young, welcome to the show and thanks for joining us. Thank you. So it's a big transaction and sort of an interesting transaction. Can you give us an overview of, uh, of the project and the structure? Sure. This is a transaction that's very similar to the privatization of Army, lot, Army housing or Navy housing, just the initiative in general. About uh, maybe three or four years ago, we got wind of a new program, the PAL program, Privatization of Army Lodging, which is very akin to how we've uh, viewed the initiative for, for family housing, where there's a federal appropriation stream. Here we have a scenario where there are 21 bases in group A and B that were pulled together for the overall uh, privatization. Group A was financed initially with a private uh, loan, un unrated back in 2008 and it's now being uh, it's going to be paid off with this new piece and the series will include a uh, 11 new bases that will highly leverage the outstanding bases that have been performing for the last three years. Okay. And what makes this project and the structure so unique? This project is very different for public finance in general. Um, one, there is an a anticipated repayment date bond are bonds that are tied to this transaction where in 10 or 20 years, in some cases for, the, for some of the bonds, if the bonds are not refinanced, there's a, a rate, a step up in the uh, interest rate by 300 basis points, and there's a cash sweep by, of 80% of excess cash that will be used to pay off those bonds by maturity date if in fact those bonds are not refinanced. Other than that, the typical structure that we would see for a military housing transaction is present. It's a little, uh, a hybrid of project finance and public finance both. So we've worked um, using criteria in both areas. Okay. And there's also federal money in the revenue stream for yes. the transaction. Can you describe the nature of that federal money? Yes. The money that, the main revenue stream here, which is different from what we typically see for a military housing transaction, is the per diem which is an annual appropriation that's also uh, set the same way the, the uh, BAH, the, the BA payments are, but for whatever market we're... And the BAH stands for? The Basic Allowance for Housing. Right. So the per diem is basically a, uh, it's like a travel uh, voucher that's used by the uh, of official and unofficial travelers who are going to either the base for uh, temporary change of station or for training or if they're on official business and they receive a, a per diem to, uh, to actually pay for their room night and that's what's used to go into the lockbox agreement for the security for the bonds. Right. And are we concerned about potential uh, federal cutbacks? Right. So when going through this analysis, we, we started looking at the history of the per diem for the last 10 and in some, in, when we started on Group A for 20 years just to get a feel for how the appropriation has been uh, sort of put out there and if it's been consistent on a, um, on the last in the last 10 years. What we found was in all scenarios, especially for group A and B, that the per diem has been appropriated at a rate of at least 2%. So when we went through our analysis, we, at le we used a 2% growth in the per diem for five years and then it remains flat thereafter just to be sure that you know, if in fact there is a, a, uh, a lack of appropriation or a huge budget cut, uh, for the per diem, because it is military spending as well, then we will be covered. What we determined in our analysis is that 
if in fact there was a decline by 8% in the per diem consistently for five years, that's where we would see this transaction have trouble. Okay. And how about any risk of potential base closures? How, how might that affect the transaction? How did that affect our analysis? Okay. So when we went through the analysis, what we did was we used all of the bases just to, and what you'll find in the report is you'll see 10 bases that are uh, contributing 88% of the net operating income to this transaction. And what, when going through that analysis, we wanted to, of course, determine how essential each base is to the, tra to the overall uh, uh, payment of debt service, because if one goes away, of course, we're going to lose some average daily night uh, revenue. So what we determined was if, in fact, all of these bases are moderate to highly essential to the DOD, to the Department of Defense, but if, in fact, three of the large bases that are part of the 88% of net operating income, if all three of those bases were to close, then we would have, again, an, a potential default on the bonds. Okay. So that, that risk factor was certainly that considered risk factor in the, is definitely in the considered. analysis. Okay, great. Although it's a highly unlikely. Right, right. And then do we expect to see additional transactions like this? Yes, the, this is a, program, a new program. Um, group A was the first uh, privatization of Army Lodging, and Group B, again, is the second phase. There is expectations of a Group C. Um, this is not just a, a program that's available or only applicable to the bases that we've rated so far. There are several lodging facilities on military bases that you know, need to be, uh, that are obsolete, similar to what we've experienced in the housing arena. So we do expect to see this moving forward. And again, that report is available on Ratings Direct on the Global Credit Portal. That concludes this segment of Credit Matters TV. I'm Mal Fallon. Thanks for joining us.